Good morning. I'm not going to wait till 555. I'm back to 444 because we need to ground master energy on Earth. That's what four means to me. It's the home. It's where we live. It's where the physical starts to take shape in the, on the, in the physical manifestation, in the physical dimensions of time and space. And it's where we've got to go back one step even further than 555. Anyway, a provocative question is the title of today's talk. Who on earth has real cosmic authority? Yesterday, I shared my frustration, echoing that of so many who see the world as it is in the matrix and do not see the changes happening that must be made if we are to experience heaven on earth. Yes, I know there is much work to do on the inside, and I have been sincerely doing my best to heal at that level. Nevertheless, when I thought the universe had provided me a lover or lovers to share their love with me to increase the cosmic love energy in my life and on our planet, I was sadly mistaken. All that was provided were more triggers that threw me right back into the same feelings of inadequacy and not good enough that have plagued me all of my life. And then I get more challenges, people calling me a liar because the changes I've envisioned have not happened yet. I'd like to believe we've reached critical mass and, that, and the hundredth monkey. However, it's obvious that that has not happened yet either. So I wonder, who on earth really has the cosmic authority to bring about the changes we so desperately need. Does such a thing even exist? Indeed, I feel the frustration. I feel it to the very depths of my soul. All the weeping in the world doesn't seem to change anything. I allowed my thoughts and feelings in regard to relationship and defining what a relationship is. I let them expand to include areas that I never would have thought that I was ready to include. Believing that maybe, just maybe, someone had come into my life that was willing to share with me where I am and where she is without judgment and we could increase the love and strengthen the love so that we could be powerful enough to transform the world, our world and the world around us to help create the envisioned world that works for everyone. Truthfully, the idea of it being without judgment is almost probably, it, it's probably impossible because I have my baggage. She, whoever the she is, it doesn't even matter who the she is. Every one of us has our baggage. We have our preconceived ideas, even if we think we don't, even if we think we're whole and that we not don't feel frustration because we've been able to cover it up. I'm not going to cover my frustration up. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated as hell. I'm re-examining everything. Here's what I know. I know that what I wanted to share in a relationship isn't happening. It hasn't been happening. It was only a vision of what I thought might be happening, but even that is being sabotaged. I'm probably one of the saboteurs, but I'm not sabotaging it alone. It takes two to sabotage a relationship or as many people as are in the relationship. It's not something that one person does. It's something that is done together because we don't know how, apparently, most of us, to meet somebody where they are and love them exactly where they are without trying to change them. I thought I was able to do that, but there are things that come up that I don't like, that don't feel right to me, that seem out of integrity to me. The gut feelings happen. And I try to 
rationalize and, and make corrections, but it doesn't work. I look at, I, I said a few days ago in one of my videos that I'm re-examining everything. I'm questioning it all. I'm questioning my involvement with, you know, if that's all you in past tense, with RUSA, with the Republic Movement for the United States, and all of the other political things that I've gotten involved in. I'm, you know, that's really, I'm not really even questioning that because it's past, so far past tense. But I'm questioning the OPPT and Swiss Indo and my involvement there. It did not move us any closer, not any closer at all to what I think needs to be done. Now, I'm not in touch with Swiss Indo anymore at all. I, I'm still invited. I'm still a delegate. I still take my position as an advisor, and these, these, these messages that I give are my advice to the world leaders, whoever they are, whether they're the cabal leaders or whether they're the leaders of the new of the real new world order that needs to take place to create a world that works for everybody. I don't care. This is, this is my message, and I'm reflecting not just what's going on with me, but I'm reflecting attitudes and things that are going on in humanity, in the collective, because I am tapped in to the collective as best I can be. I'm tapped into that. And the frustration that I feel is the frustration that many feel. And the people that don't feel that frustration, as I see it, are not paying attention. Now, they may not see it that way, but that's how I perceive it. And it doesn't feel good. The people that, that have come into my life that want to, to help, I'm sorry. I don't feel the help. I'm not experiencing it as help. I'm experiencing it as more challenges, more things that I'm doing wrong, more things that I'm not getting right, more things that I'm, you know, I'm not allowed to have to have bad feelings. I'm not allowed to express ideas that are con considered negative. Well, I can't handle a relationship that I can't be me. I can't handle that. I'm sorry. And, and I don't have a relationship. That's the truth. I don't have a romantic relationship. I have somebody that claims to want to be in a relationship, that kind of a relationship with me, but it's not happening. It's not real. It's still, it may as well be a relationship with somebody that lives on the other side of the world. Because I don't get to spend any real intimate time dealing with the emotional rawness that I'm feeling. I don't get any, any real support nor am I able to give any real support. Of course, there's not any need expressed for support coming from the other side. But this is, this is what I'm dealing with. And it, and it hurts. And it's hard. And then I'm dealing with the ambassador. And I'm beginning to wonder if anything, if any of that was ever real. I'm honestly questioning it. I'm doubting. Yes, I'm doubting. There's no evidence of anything. Not any evidence of anything being real. None. All I have is some man that I've been talking to on a regular basis that's been talking about the Red Dragon and the Count the World, the Council of, uh, of the Family. All right. Do I believe such a thing exists? Well, I've been told that such a thing exists way before I ever heard of the ambassador, way before I ever interacted, I've been told that there was a, that there's sort of a ruling family and an elite behind that, of, of names that you never even know. Not Rothschilds, not Rockefellers, not the names that we've all heard, not even the Pope or, or things like that. Something that's behind that. Somebody with, you know, a group of people with real power and real authority. But I wonder, does such a thing really exist? People say, Ron, the work has to be done on the inside. And as I said in my blurb, I've been really doing the Ho'oponopono every day. Sometimes for a longer periods of time than others, but every day I'm spending time bringing up those attitudes, the attitude of love, of, of loving myself, of loving the world, the attitude of repentance, I'm sorry. 
the attitude of forgiveness, uh, needing to forgive and be forgiven, and do it for, to myself, and gratitude. I've experienced all of these things. As I said, sometimes with tears coming down my face, sometimes driving in my car with my eyes welling up with tears as I look at the people around me and as I look at the world and I feel the feelings and I tap into the collective unconscious of humanity and tap into my own shadow. And I'm not going to turn that off. But I'm wondering, how are we ever going to get out of the prison that we're in? As Nanari said, it looks like the elite have won. The, the, the grid, the, the, the control grid is around us all over the place. And we're supposed to heal that from the inside. I'm sorry. Humanity will never heal it from the inside. Not ever. Not ever. If it, if it, were, if it were to take a majority of humans doing the inner work and healing on the inside, it will never happen. It will never happen. Not as long as the control grid remains in place. The control grid must be taken down. It must be stopped. The, the genetically genetic modification of food must be stopped. Chemtrails must be stopped. Fukushima must be cleaned up and all of the other pollution in our oceans and on our land and in our air and in our water. All of it must be cleaned up and especially the pollution in our governments and our institutions. It must be cleaned up. There's where the problem is. It's Yes, it's inside. Yes, that's a reflection of the collective. I see that. I get it. But it will not change on the inside. People will not do the inner work as long as they're kept on the grind wheel of having to of chase after money and chase after things in the system just to survive just to live, to chase after food in some places, to chase after uh, clean water or, or things that sustain life. That should not be a struggle. There is no lack of anything on earth, nothing. If there's a lack of anything, it's a lack of real love. It's a lack of real empathy. It's a lack of willingness to be with people in the problem where they hurt. And especially those that want to make a difference. But instead of, of, of attracting what is needed, it seems like that what, what is needed is repelled. We're repelled by that which we're unwill, unwilling to love. And then I think I've lied to myself over and over again, thinking that I'm willing. But when push comes to shove, am I really willing? Am I really willing? I was challenged that I should have been willing to love that to love that lady more the other night. Should I have? I don't know. My gut was saying, "Oof, something's wrong here," and two other people verified it. What I know is I'm looking at a world where people are hurting and feeling the hurt inside of me as my own. It's not their hurt, it's my hurt. It's my frustration. Yes. It's out there. Yes, it's in here. It's both and, not either or. The job is always both and, and not either or. We've lived in an either or world far too long. And it's not either the heart or the mind. It's the heart and the mind. It's not either the spiritual or the physical. It must be both the spiritual and the physical. It must be both the heaven and the earth. It must be the masculine and the feminine. It must be the light and the darkness. It must be a dance, not a duel. We've got to get out of the duel. I need to get out of the duel. I need to stop fighting a war that can't be won and start winning a battle that must be won. The battle to love and take love where it couldn't go before. Is there a cosmic authority of some sort that can make it happen? We're not supposed to look, we keep being told, for some outside salvation or savior. Well, I'm sorry. There is no outside. Everything that's happening is happening inside of the collective called humanity. On the collective called the solar system or even 
Mother Earth. It's a collective, and it's all inside of the collective. Do you understand? It's not just inside of the microcosm, me, and inside of the microcosm, you. It's inside of the microcosm of the universe called humanity. That's a microcosm, too. And it's inside of that microcosm that is all that all of these issues and problems that rob us of our own inheritance, that rob us of our own value, that rob us of our own essence, even. As much as that is possible, we're being robbed, we're being stolen from by a civilization, a culture of greed, a culture of fraud, a culture of violence. That's the culture we live in. Who has the cosmic authority to stop that crap and give us at least a breather of a generation to catch up? And yes, I'm calling for a savior. I'm calling for somebody that actually has the power to do what needs to be done in the physical world around me that I live in because I'm not looking for pie in the sky. Do you understand? I'm looking for something real on the planet that's brought into physical manifestation. I don't want ethereal ideas. I don't want promises. We've had enough of that shit. Do you understand? We've had enough of that. And it hurts to keep getting promised to and promised to and promised to and nobody delivers on the promises that they make. Now, is it because they can't? Maybe no one does have the authority and then we're fucked. We're really screwed. If, if such a thing does not exist as someone having real authority and real power to actually turn the world around and to create the anantiodromia, the reverse flow of energy, so that we can start experiencing good instead of evil, so that we can start experiencing the light and the, and the awakening instead of the ignorance of the, and the darkness that we've been entrapped in for so long. What's it going to take? It's not just an inner work. It's an inner and an outer work. It's a both and job. It's not an either-or job. And when are you going to see that the either-or is the separation consciousness? When you're thinking that it has to be either this or that, it's a separation consciousness. It's both and. We need both this and that on all of the pairs of opposites. They are made to dance. We've got to stop them from dueling with each other. We've got to stop that duel. We've got to make a world where people's basic needs are provided. We've got to make a world where people don't have to struggle just to survive. We've got to make a world where there is justice, where people who have, have been wronged can have their voice heard and have, have their wrongs righted. That's the world that works for everybody. But we're not even close to that in 2014. We're not even close. A lot of dreamers like me, a lot of visionaries like me see the world, but it's certainly not close to anything in, in manifest form. That's the reality that we're living in. And I'm going to tell the truth. That's the truth that I perceive. You don't have to perceive it. You don't even have to listen if you don't want to. If you have a different reality and want to create a different reality, go for it. But this is what I see, and I'm trying to be as realistic and as loving and truthful as I possibly can be. And I'm sharing as faithfully as I can, day after day. I want a world that works for all of us. And we need to look at the problems. In the physical world, the problem is the cabal. It needs to be brought down once and for all, even if it's only for a generation or two, to allow humanity to catch up and to get its bearings and to discover the essence that we are. We are love. But we don't even know, even those of us that think we're awakened, don't even know how to share the love that we talk about. It's a sad thing. Thank you for listening. Namaste.